Okay, we have one very tall man coming, so uh, we'll let us know if, uh, <laughs> if there's a problem with volume. And that tall man happens to be Tim Siebels, uh, who will be our first reader tonight. Uh, Tim is an associate professor of creative writing in the Department of English at Old Dominion University at Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, his credentials for being in the Public Poetry Project uh, consist of being born and raised in Philadelphia, after which he went to college in Southern, at Southern Methodist University where he played football and began to study poetry, uh, and then spent 10 years in Texas as a high school English teacher. Tim had a fellowship at the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown on Cape Cod. He's published six books of poetry, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, beginning with Body Moves in 1988, moving to Hurdy Gurdy, uh, in 1992, then to Kerosene, 10 miles an hour, Hammerlock, and uh, in 2004, his most recent, Buffalo Head Solos. Tim's poetry has appeared in the journals Callaloo, New England Review, Plowshares, Kenyon Review, Black American Literature Forum, New Letters, and Red Brick Review, among other venues. His poem, Alison Wolf, was included in the anthology The Best American Poetry 2010. Tim serves as a faculty member, or served, uh, excuse me, uh, as a faculty member with the Kaveh Kahneman Foundation. He was poet in residence at Bucknell University last year. In his collection, Buffalo Head Solos, he concludes the introductory open letter with these words. These are rough days, desperate times. Times when our language is publicly tortured and forced to mean so much less than it means. There must be a way to stop this dying, to make a literature that does more, a poetry with the kiss of a shark and the feet of a sparrow, a poetry at intervals beautiful, then ruthless, frank but full of quickening delusions. Join me in welcoming Tim Siebels. All right. It's nice to be here. I met at Penn State many years ago, probably 12 or so years ago. It's always good to be back. Got Steve Carpenter and Zubeda on ice in the audience. People you should all avoid. <laughs> I'll start with a poem from uh, the collection that'll come out um, next year about this time. It's just called Dolores Epson. I'll just, uh, I'll just say this briefly about it. Um, um, probably in every high school there, if you're a dude or if, it depends on who's looking, but there's somebody who is so handsome or so beautiful that you just don't know what to do with yourself. And for us, um, uh, it was Dolores Epps. And I mentioned um, uh, the name Terry in here, and that was my best friend at the time, but we're still good friends. And I think that's really all you need to know. Um, I think everybody in here knows who the Temptations are, but you'd be surprised, some people don't. That was a, a quintet of vocalists from Once Upon a Time. I've been places where people say, Temptations? So I can tell you getting old. Dolores Epps. It seems insane now, but she'd be standing soaked in school day morning light, her loose leaf notebook flickering at the bus stop, and we almost trembled at the thought of her mouth filled for a moment with both of our short names. I don't know what we saw when we saw her face, but at 15 there's so much left to believe in that a girl with sunset in her eyes, with a kind smile and a bright blue miniskirt softly shading her bare thighs, really could be the goddess. Even the gloss on her lips sighed, kiss me, and you'll never do homework again. <laughs> some Saturdays, <laughs> some Saturdays, my ace Terry would say, guess who was buying tea berry gum at the drugstore on Stenton? And I could see the sweet epiphany still stunning his eyes, and I knew that he knew that I knew, he knew, I knew. <laughs> Especially once summer had come 
And the sun stayed up till we had nothing else to do but wish and wonder about fine sisters and flimsy culottes and those hot pants James Brown screamed about. Crystal Berry, Diane Ramsey, Kim Graves, and her. This was around 1970. Vietnam to the left of us, black Muslims to the right, big Afros all over my Philadelphia. We had no idea where we were, how much history had come before us, how much cruelty, how much more dying was on the way. For me and Terry, it was a time when everything said, maybe. And maybe being blinded by the beauty of a 10th grader was proof that, for a little while, we were safe from the teeth that were chewing up the world. I'd like to commend my parents for keeping calm, for not quitting their jobs or grabbing guns and for never letting up about the amazing, quote, so many doors open to good students, unquote. I wish I had kissed Dolores Epps. I wish I had some small memory of her warm and spicy mouth to wrap these hungry words around. I would like to have danced with her, to have slow cooked to a slow song in her sleek, toffee arms, her body balanced between the temptations, five voices, and me, a boy anointed with puberty, a kid with a B average and a cool best friend. I don't think I've ever understood how lonely I am, but I was closer to it at 15 because I didn't know anything. My heart so near the surface of my skin, I could have moved it with my hand. I was talking to uh, the one judge who was present at dinner about ecstasy. I mean, poems are, you know, there's plenty of anguish to be dealt with in the world, no doubt, right? But I'll read this poem in, um, you know, in honor of ecstasy because, I mean, we don't live for anguish, we live for delight, yes? And this was, poem is called First Kiss and it's dedicated to lips, which means everybody's got a pair, yes? <laughs> First Kiss. Her mouth fell into my mouth like a summer snow, like a fifth season, like a fresh Eden, like Eden when Eve made God whimper with the liquid tilt of her hips. Her kiss hurt like that. I mean, it was as if she'd mixed the sweat of an angel with the taste of a tangerine. I swear, my mouth had been a helmet forever greased with secrets. My mouth, a dead-end street, a little bit lit by teeth. My heart, a clam, slammed shut at the bottom of a dark. But her mouth pulled up like a baby blue Cadillac, packed with canaries, driven by a toucan. I swear those lips said bright wings when we kissed, wild and precise as if she were teaching a seahorse to speak. Her mouth so careful, chumming the first vowel from my throat until my brain was a piano, banged loud, hammered like that. It was like, I swear, her tongue was Saturn's seventh moon, hot like that, hot and cold, and circling, circling, turning me into a glad planet, sun on one side, night pouring her slow hand over the other, one fire flying the kite of another, her kiss, I swear. If the great mother rushed open the moon like a gift and you were there to feel your shadow finally unhooked from your wrist, that'd be it. But even sweeter, like a riot of peg-leg priests on pogo sticks, up and up 
this way and this, not falling, but on and on like that, badly behaved, but holy, I swear. That kiss, both lips utterly committed to the world, like a Peace Corps, like a free store, forever and always a new city, no locks, no walls, just doors. Like that, I swear, like that. Anyway, I'm very grateful to have been selected to have my poem become a public document. And so I would like to read that piece. I figured when I looked at, when I realized this was the poem that was chosen, I thought I would try to get, um, like develop a, a motif of lips and kisses. So this one also has a reference to it, the uh, Harvest Moon. <laughs> I figure, why not? Can there ever be too many kisses? I don't think so. Anyway, but I'm grateful uh, for the center of the book and Penn State for having such a powerful interest in the literary arts. And of course, for all of you coming out tonight, and I'm sure I can speak for the other poets. Um, so much of the time we spend, we spend kind of banging our heads against commas and, and question marks and, and should it be this or should it be that? Or should I use an article at all? And this kind of solitary lunacy. So it's always a real pleasure to get to actually read two people and sing to you guys. So thanks again for being here. Uh, this is called Harvest Moon. It's that poem. Big sister, apple light, kiss on the river, tonight, Make each word a strange dish, each long ache for once a gotten wish. Let this small song brush the big dark back while you stroll along the sky forever. Yo, to think such bright shadow, this black sash, that soft shine she wears, comes spun from a sun flung aloft the other side of my world. What cat-eyed glow, what well-keyed mischief, what slow hands, deft and delicious, undress my grim predictions, juice up my ragtime shoes. It happens on the now while the moon is unshy. My soul, yo, otherwise a pale theory, leaps into the visible, trying his slippery spin on the glad lap of earth. Uncles, mothers, sly lovers, mad friends, the moon does not come back just to knock our dim efforts, nor does the river bend away. Wasn't it this time last year, remember, the chubby invitation come soon, soon, each early autumn. Look at the water with the light jingling like a wind chime in the shimmer. Turn around. Our hearts shine late in the trees. I'll close with this poem. It's called Late Shift. Places may be dreams from which I cannot return. The velvet touch of her lips. First light fingering a cup sacred dislocations of mind, the way the right sound becomes visible. Where I am now, it's later. The clocks have been amended to include all the strange hours. And someone cracked my name as if all my life I'd been locked inside. I know the shelves stay stocked, 
Big cars lead the chase. There's always more and more to eat. But was that ever my country? I was born there, and I'd go back if I could, just to feel less lonely. But when I took, but what I took to be a certain distance was actually a late shift in myself, a different kind of listening, the voice, a thread of honey, the jar tipped just enough to one side. Listen, we belong to no nation. One day we will hold the earth again as if she were a love nearly lost, her rainy hair tangled in our hands. The soul is what we are, every life a word the wind turns to say. And though trouble grows back like a beard, an unchained blood governs my tongue. I have seen the door that is not there still open.